Okay, here we are. So Asher and I have installed the Starlink antenna uh, up on the roof, got a good place for it. Uh, you can see it up there right on the other side of the chimney um, and it's working, it's working really well. Uh, so let's see, I'll show you on my phone. We've got it connected, it's online. You can go in and, and do a little speed test and things are moving pretty good. Uh, we got 200 megabits this morning, so if I go do my phone speed test, we'll see how it does right now. So this is going to be our baseline. Kind of a high ping latency there. We were seeing about 50 milliseconds this morning, but there's 150 megabit. Uh, we got 236 this morning, so really great location for it and, and things are working really well. Yep, the upload usually takes a second to kind of kick in there, uh, but really happy with that. The problem that we've got is that the cable that Starlink sends with it is really big on the end where we need to poke it through the house. And I'm gonna show you where we're, where we're trying to go with it. Okay, so we're down here. So the, again, the Starlink is, uh, let's see, way up there cable comes down and this is where I want it to come into the house to go into my AV closet. I've got a, a waterproof box on the outside of the house. Got my little Eero out here so that I've got high speed internet in the hammock. Uh, and I've got this little copper tube that's cocked in uh, where I can run wires in and out. So I've got a little bit of space, certainly enough space left in there for another Cat6 cable, but not uh, if I've got to send this big end through. This is, this is the end that Starlink comes with. Uh, that you've got to plug into their router. Uh, but online, it, everybody's saying that what's in here is just a normal Cat6 or Cat6e cable, uh, twisted pair kind of cable, um, but you have this end on that there's no way I'm gonna get through there. So the question is, can I just cut it and put new Cat6 ends on it and have it work just as well? Uh, people online think that maybe you can, but everybody seems to be afraid to do it. Um, seems like kind of a little bit of low risk because if it doesn't work, I guess we just out a cable and have to buy a new cable. So we're going to go ahead and try to do that now and see if we can still get the Starlink to work. Okay, so we are back up on the deck here where I've got my uh, Starlink uh, Starlink router right down here. Uh, my cable plugged into it that we just did our speed test on. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take that cable out. Ashley, can you, can you grab that cable and bring it over to me? And... Then I've got a few things up here to help me. So I've got my uh, my kit for putting new ends on uh, Cat6 wires. Got all my ends in here. As you can see my crimper, splitter, uh, and I, I picked up a coupler, just a, a Cat6 coupler. So the idea is we're gonna cut the wire, put an end on each side, throw it through the coupler, and see if this thing still works as well. Uh, so here's our here's our cable our Starlink cable here with the big fat end on it. And I'm just gonna, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let enough ends so that I, I can work with it. Um, and that would feed through the house if I needed to. I'll do it right here and then if this works, I can I can put a, an end on up longer, you know, higher on the cord so I don't have as much cord to work with. But, so here goes. Uh, hopefully we're not gonna lose our Starlink. Uh, it, it looks like a normal Cat6 wire, so yeah, I think we should be good. Um, I've got my pin diagram here. You know, it's, it's white, green, green, white, orange, blue, white, blue, orange, white, brown, brown. It uses like four of those or something. Um, so uh, now we're gonna set it up on time lapse, and I'm just gonna pull these ends apart, put uh, put new RJ45 uh, ends on them, put them through a coupler, and see if the internet still works. Okay, so we've got our, our two Ethernet ends on the Starlink cable now, uh, and I did, them, I did them both the same way, if you can zoom in there. Uh, you can see it's white, green, green, uh, white, orange, blue, white, blue, orange, white, brown, brown on both sides. Now, the coupler 
when you put them together, you know, they would be going to opposite wires, but usually in these couplers, you know, back in the day, you used to have to wire your opposite sides opposite, but I think this coupler will have a built-in switch to switch the wires to the right path so they all stay on the same circuit, I hope. Uh, so let's get into this RJ45 coupler. So our last magic ingredient here to hopefully make this work. Let's see what it says, category six, power, yeah. So basically, should just be able to pop those in there and we should be good to go again, I hope. So hopefully we'll plug this in and maybe the internet will work. Okay, so yeah, it's said no cable plugged in, then it said booting, now it says searching. So we're just waiting uh, to see online. It says online. <laughs> oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Let's okay, go. it says online. Um, let's, just, let's do like the, let's test, do the phone, test. let's do the phone speed test first. Okay. Connecting SpaceX Starlink. And it's about the same ping time as we had before the chaos. Let's go. I mean, that's like the same. It's working. Cause it takes a bit to like get higher. Yeah. It's working. I mean, that's consistent with what we were seeing before is either hundred up to 200 sometimes, depending on the satellites above. Right. But Upload is working, everything's working. And as you can see down here, it's it's totally passing through a Cat6, uh, two Cat6 ends and a Cat6 coupler. So I should be able to cut again, send that wire through the house easily, put a new end on, and we should be up and running and in business. Cool. Okay, one last note. Uh, so everything's up and running, uh, but I noticed when we, we put the ends on that there are these extra metal wires in the Starlink cable. And I got a little nervous that maybe this was some kind of ground system. And so I kept those off, you know, clipped them, clipped them off with the thing so that I could just twist these together. So if you do this, I would recommend probably making sure that you have a good connection on that ground. I might cover this up with electrical tape or something after the fact, but um, just in case that's there for any kind of like ground support or you know, the thing is up on the roof and lightning could hit it or something. I don't know. Uh, there is a three-pronged plug on the on the router, so it's it's possible that that routes all the way through the ground. Okay, that's it. Up and running.